Ever wondered how N-acetylcysteine or NAC interacts with spike proteins? Well, you're not alone. Today we're diving headfirst into the intriguing world of NAC and its potential interaction with these pivotal proteins. Spike proteins are key players in the entry of SARS-CoV-2 into human cells, marking the beginning of an infection. As we venture into the depths of this complex interaction, we'll explore NAC's properties, its potential effects on spike proteins, and the ongoing research in this captivating field. Pay attention as we delve into the fascinating world of NAC and its potential effects on spike proteins. Okay, first let's get to know NAC a little better. N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, is a compound celebrated for its antioxidant properties. It boosts our cellular levels of glutathione, a potent antioxidant that counteracts oxidative stress often induced by viral infections. Additionally, NAC plays a role in modulating our immune response and is known for its mucolytic effects, breaking down thick mucus, a crucial factor in respiratory health. It may also have anti-inflammatory effects. Now that we've covered the basics of NAC, let's move on to its interaction with spike proteins. So, how does NAC interact with those pesky spike proteins? Well, it all starts with something called thiol disulfide exchange. This chemical reaction can impact the structure and function of viral proteins, including our spiky unfriends. NAC, with its antioxidant properties and its ability to boost glutathione levels, could play a vital role in this process. Here comes the exciting part. By influencing thiol disulfide exchange, NAC may actually contribute to reducing viral replication. In simpler terms, it could potentially slow down the spread of the virus within the body. But that's not all. Remember NAC's mucolytic effects? They could come into play too, providing much needed respiratory support during viral infections. This could be particularly relevant in the context of stupid 19, where respiratory complications are a major concern. As we can see, NAC's interaction with spike proteins is a subject of intense and ongoing research. Let's explore the current state of research on NAC and stupid 19. Ongoing clinical trials are diving into the efficacy of NAC in managing the symptoms of stupid 19, including its potential impact on spike proteins. The optimal dosage and administration methods remain under investigation. It's crucial to remember that anyone considering NAC supplementation, especially in the context of stupid 19, should consult healthcare professionals due to potential interactions and individual health considerations. There's also a growing interest in the potential synergistic effects of NAC with other therapeutic interventions. This reflects a broader trend towards exploring alternative and complementary approaches to viral infections. Regulatory bodies worldwide are closely monitoring these developments, considering safety, efficacy, and appropriate usage of potential treatments like NAC. The importance of scientific collaboration cannot be overstated. Scientists, clinicians, and researchers across the globe are contributing to our understanding of NAC's potential role in managing COVID-19 complications. As research progresses, we continue to uncover the potential of NAC in managing stupid 19 complications, including its effects on spike proteins. So, where does this leave us? We've explored N-acetylcysteine's potential role in managing stupid 19 complications and its interaction with spike proteins. While we await more definitive answers from ongoing research, the potential of NAC continues to intrigue scientists and researchers alike. Legal Disclaimer This is not medical advice, this video is intended for educational purposes only. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe below and remember to always live well, my friends.